All right, hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel for kind of a different video today. And this is gonna be a discussion. I do have a special guest with me today. That is Mark from Split Screen Gaming. And we're gonna be talking about everything Star Wars gaming news at the moment and all the current talking points that everybody seems to be bringing up at the moment because there's some really exciting stuff. And I wanted to have a conversation with someone who is in the network of Star Wars games as well and sort of understands it and knows it from like the perspective that I have it and have a good conversation about it. So Mark, welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Good stuff. Yeah, lots I'm well. lots. Yeah, so many things to talk about right now. So, <laughs> um, guys, if you don't know, Mark is another Star Wars gaming YouTube creator and live streamer. Um, I will have his links down below if you guys want to check him out. Recently, one of the most recent inductees to the EA Game Changers program came on board with Star Wars Squadrons and has just passed 3,000 subscribers. So congratulations on that again, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No worries. No worries. Um, so a lot of interesting things to talk about today. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of stuff going on in Star Wars gaming news, the yeah. biggest of which was the announcement just recently that Lucasfilm's games has returned and is making a comeback and they're working with Ubisoft on an open world Star Wars game. What are your thoughts on that, man? Uh, <laughs> I'm still like mind blown by that, to be honest. It's just, it's crazy. I mean, I was like over the last week, I've been speaking with various people about games I want to see, open world game being the main thing. So it's the fact mm -hmm. that I've had like three or four different conversations about more Star Wars games. And then suddenly next week, bang, we have, we have <laughs> this. Like, it's it's, it's like crazy, you predicted honestly. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just it's ma it's just mental. Like I really wasn't expecting to go into this year and two weeks in we have all this news already. Um, it's it's crazy, and it's coming from the team who did the division, and yes, the creative yeah. director also worked on the crew as well. So I'm really excited to see what they can do with it, and the fact that we've got next gen technology going into this next generation of games as well. Like there's so much more they can do that they weren't able to do before. So yeah, really really excited to see what they can pull off here. Yeah, and like obviously some serious talent working on this game and, and in the development of it. Um, you know, these people are, have, have made games previously that a lot of people have loved and obviously there's no short of creativity that you can come up with in the Star Wars universe. Uh, if you yeah. can kind of set, you know, pick a setting for this open world game, what's, what's kind of your ideal, uh, I guess, way to play this game or, or what's your ideal storyline or character development that you kind of want to see and what sort of world do you want to see it in as well yeah so for me it's it is still very much like a bounty hunter like underworld sort of thing i'd love to go to maybe coruscant underworlds or even as far as tatooine in the outer rim and stuff like that bounty hunter open world game is the thing that i've always wanted mm. whether that's like you know have a single player story and then have an alt that you know like a multiplayer online you know basically like, you know gta, GTA or Red yeah. Dead and stuff like that. so that's the kind of thing i'd love to see maybe you start off as like a lonesome bounty hunter then you get put into this crew with like a big shot gangster um and you just go on and do all these missions and stuff like that i think for me that would be ideal when you get to go to different planets and then you will have this explorable hub that's not like in you know stupidly massive but mm. enough so that you've got plenty to do on one planet but you can go to like three or four others i think that would be ideal for me but we'll see yeah and i think i think one of the things that i've kind of been toying with in my head like i feel like the old republic games you know star wars the old republic combined with like something like gta is just such a crazy setting like that could yeah. be a thing you know it's open world there's so much of that era that you can explore there's so much you know in terms of legends content that you could potentially bring back or dive into um yeah. you know and even just that that period of time you know the the sith war and things like that like going in to explore that in an open world setting or the things you can kind of open up to like you said with mandalorian content and going into the, the craziness obviously we've just had mando so we're a bit more familiar with like I guess the way they kind of operate and, and the way they behave and some of the things that they're used to. So, um, you know, with, with Mando, you did see a little bit of like the bounty hunter guild side of things. So, you know, it would definitely be cool to, to have someone to go to that would give you assignments or missions or whatever it might be and be able to fulfill those, but being able to yeah. explore, like you said, the, the lower, the lower world of Coruscant, like, or go to you know other planets that, that maybe we haven't seen 
in in film or game yet or something you know out of the old republic like i was saying before so definitely super exciting um things like in the works and and the biggest thing i guess is ea has previously had exclusivity on the star wars license this is being made by ubisoft what what are your kind of quick thoughts on that as well i'm i'm really excited to see what what can happen really the because i you know the games we've had from ea so far i've really enjoyed all of them but Mm -hmm. as a star wars gamer you know we've had some really good games but just not enough of them so the fact that the licenses have been opened up we're getting stuff from ubisoft and other developers with more news coming later this year then Mm. yeah i'm really excited because we should see not only awesome star wars games but just more of them as well and it's yeah i'm really excited to see what we can see over the next few years yeah and that's definitely one thing that stood out to me as well is with lucasfilm games being able to work with any studio that they want or any publisher that they want to work with you know outside of ea as well you get these other big companies they're all going to want to take their shot at star wars so like you said it could lead to a ton of games which which is really really exciting and they did mention in the articles that were posted that ea is obviously still working on star wars projects for um for lucasfilm and for disney and and one of those is obviously going to be jedi fallen order 2 we know of that but there's a lot of people that are sort of reaching out saying you know is battlefront 3 going to become a thing and this seems to be the question everyone's asking right now it's the question everybody you know i get spammed it every single day like is battlefront 3 coming and all of us youtube creators have kind of made our videos on it and put them out there what what are your kind of quick thoughts on whether battlefront 3 is coming um i think it's got every chance that it could like i don't think there's any particular reason why it can't and especially Mm. with epic games store having battlefront 2 for free i'm sure there's like a massive influx of players you know it's it's Mm. crazy so like you know ea servers they've had to like upscale those which is ridiculous we've never seen that for um for battlefront ever so it's really nice to see that and i think that maybe this huge influx of players over the last year can really speak to ea and be like right okay well we can't just not do this because with the amount of players there is now if they made a battlefront 3 then that's you know they can make so much money from that mm-hmm. um that or like battlefront updates had a really interesting idea where essentially it would almost like be battlefront 2 remastered so you have all the battlefront 2 content but you overhaul a lot of the, like the progression system monetization mm-hmm. system you release it as a free-to-play system uh, as a free-to-play game free post-launch content but you monetize it through like a battle pass and skins and i feel like mm. with the amount of people who would be interested in that like ea should be able to make a crap ton of money from that so i think battlefront 3 could definitely come but it's not something that we'll see within the next year or two mm. and that's kind of what i said in my video too you know I, I i get this question so much that i'm just so used to answering it now and it seems like you know battlefront 2 at scale is such a big game and takes such a long time to produce you know there was obviously three years between battlefront 2015 uh and and battlefront 2 so it's kind of like battlefront 3 is only going to be bigger and better and then they have to make it for next gen you know consoles and everything as well so that's going to face challenges you know if they've just started working on battlefront 3 if that was even being worked on we're a couple of years away at least you know i saw i saw someone speculating today that you know, a year ago, Vince Zampella, who was obviously worked on, on Fallen Order, went and moved to DICE LA like a year ago. And and, and it was like, like, is he at DICE working on Battlefront stuff? Like, is, is it like, is that a correlation? Even though like, I know obviously DICE in Stockholm was, was the, the creators of Battlefront 2. DICE LA worked yeah. on some of, of the DLC and then the additional content that we got. But i kind of think that's a bit of a stretch you know what i mean like as much as i would love to yeah. to speculate the same thing i think it's still stretching and and I, like i said i think if we're going to get battlefront 3 we are yeah at least a couple of years off that yeah the thing with dice la though is that with the announcement of vince ampella like taking control of the studio mm. it was said that they would rebrand and they'd be working on a brand new ip as well yeah so like that's so that's obviously not going to be Star Wars, and that's the thing. Like, it's been so it, that was the information that everyone was told when that news came out. Yeah. So it's like you can speculate it all you want, but do one minute of research and you'll find this. And you'll find it's not there. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I, I just 
I looked at it and I went, yeah, I, I don't know about that one. It's a bit of a stretch, but you know, yeah. Battlefront 2, obviously we, we touched on it a little bit just a minute ago and, and the, the rising popularity that it currently has with the servers having to, to be up to, for the income of players due to it being free on the Epic Store. So there's a whole bunch of PC players that are now getting this for free and, and coming in and playing it. And obviously there's, I've, I've jumped on a couple of times in the last few days. I have no issues finding lobbies on PC, um, you know, yeah. which previously I had tried to play on PC as well. Um, obviously after the end of the support for Battlefront 2 and it, it was just really hard to find games. So it's nice to see mm -hmm. a lot of low levels and, and new people coming into this game. You know, what, yeah, what do you sure. think on, on the uh, influx of players and, and the huge support and outpouring of new players that, that have been seen in Battlefront 2 just recently? It's, I mean, it's awesome to see as someone who's stuck by this game since launch. Like, it's it's a really good feeling to know that over the last year, you know, through PlayStation Plus back in July last year, mm -hmm. and now through Epic Games, that so many people are being able to explore this game for themselves and play through all the content that we've been cherishing for so long it, it also makes me kind of think that like imagine if they were still updating the game mm. because they've had all this influx of players if they were still updating this game then all of these players would then also be able to experience what we experienced as well and i just feel like that would be such a nice feeling for them um but yeah i mean it's awesome to see and i think like i said earlier it would be i i hope that this provides a statement to ea that actually the battlefront series is worth making another game on because there is a lot of money in there. There is a lot of players to to want to play these games. And with all the Star Wars content coming over the next few years with the TV shows, if you make a Battlefront game, there's just endless content potential. With yeah, that. yeah. And that's the thing. Like, everyone always talks about it, and I know I talk about it as well. Like, the, the amount of endless things that we didn't get in Battlefront 2 that we hoped we got, and, you know, the, the ending with the Scarif update being so abrupt and so out of the blue that we weren't expecting, you know, these new players that are coming to the game now, they don't get to experience what it feels like to be sitting there on an update day waiting for a new <laughs> hero or, 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 you know, waiting for new reinforcements to, to play and see for the first time. Like, you know, you've obviously seen some, some pretty big explosions in live streams around update times and, and even video results and views. And, you know, I had yeah. that, that crazy stream with the Dooku release and, you know, it just really shows that, that the hype around star wars games is just massive and there's so many people that are interested in what's going on you know the release of jedi fallen order and the release of squadrons like they they all had interest around them you know and and even a smaller yeah. game like squadron still generated a lot of you know people talking and started getting them involved in in star wars conversations so i've i think the more games we get the better and like you said with more studios and more publishers working on these games it's going to be the same thing that we felt with those battlefront 2 updates when the hype was around it but it's going to be for games man <laughs> like like that's crazy to think <laughs> yeah, about like imagine idea. getting yeah. more than a star wars game a year or even even one star wars game a oh, year yeah. like like we had battlefront mm -hmm. 2 for three years you know what i mean like that that uh yeah. it, it came out and in 2017 and and we were just like this is crazy like this is it's been it's been a couple of years since we had a star wars game we played that for three years and then we got squadrons which in my opinion is great for a small period of time like i i like squadrons yeah. and i enjoy playing squadrons on occasion but it's not something like a battlefront 2 that's so fleshed out and there's so much content and it's so deep that you can really sink time into and you can spend 100 yeah, 200 cool. 300 a thousand hours like we've done with battlefront 2 you know I just yeah, didn't 100%. see squadrons as that, but but opening it up to mm -hmm. more studios to work on Star Wars, it, it just creates that opportunity of diverse content and diverse gameplay for the consumer that they're mm -hmm. gonna get to experience. You know, as a consumer yeah, they're gonna absolutely. get to play so much Star Wars and then they're gonna get to go on YouTube and watch their favorite creators like us and, and Sammy and whoever else that they might watch and see our yeah. opinions or our tips or our, our videos and consume that content as well. It's just entertainment, like explosion in the Star Wars gaming world, which is crazy. It really is. Yeah. 
I mean, over the last kind of few weeks, because like you know, with Squadrons, like I absolutely love the game, and I to this day think it's one of the best Star Wars experiences I've ever had, um, especially with games. Mm -hmm. And but it's it's not something I find myself playing on a pretty regular basis, really. I, I need to go back on and get you know try and keep doing day challenges for Operation Two, but mm. um, I don't find myself playing um, or having a huge drive to to play it a lot. Um, it, it's very much like an on occasion thing for me, mm. and it. it and the fact that, yeah, as you say, like over the next few years, we're going to be getting a lot more games. Like we're we're still going to be a couple of years away until we get any game that's not from EA. But the fact yeah. that eventually we're going to be in a, a situation where we could very well be seeing one or two Star Wars games every single year yeah. for us. Like, well, for for us as as players, like that's absolutely insane. But then for us as creators, like we have all this news content mm. and other content that we can make on this, and it's just. It's really exciting because over the last few weeks, I've been really feeling a drought of Star Wars gaming news and just really hoping that we'll see something soon. I wasn't expecting anything until EA Play Live later this year, and yeah. then we've had this. And how, so how big was that so announcement? Like, we were we were literally playing Warzone together when we found out we were, that yeah. information, <laughs> and, and we just, we, we yeah. were like, like, I stopped stream. I, I said to chat, hold on, guys, like, I'm sorry. We need to look mm -hmm. into this. Like, we need to dive into it. And I, I, me and you were just silent for, like, 10 minutes like <laughs> reading this article and going through and my chat's just sitting there going what is going on because they're all call of duty people like they don't really know about yeah. the star wars side that we cover and it was just so mm -hmm. funny to see and and it's just so exciting like such a bombshell as well yeah. to know that ubisoft was going to be working on an open world game you, yeah. you know uh, not only was it a surprise to see that it was someone outside of ea it was also a surprise as an open world game and, and it was going to be you know worked on from them that announcement just me and you were just like we didn't no. want we didn't believe it we we didn't we, we thought it was no, like yeah. fake news like we didn't know what to think or what to yeah. expect and um yeah when we started to read more into it and find out that it was legit and it was actually happening we were just we like kids on christmas man like freaking out mm -hmm. that that more star wars <laughs> games were coming and and they're in the works do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. Uh, especially something like an open world game like an open world game can just provide endless hours of gameplay endless hours of content endless hours of fun like mm -hmm. it's something that we're going to get a lot of time out of and and i really am excited and you yeah. know that just opens it up for like i said for all these other publishers to get in and and give a crack at the star wars license so kind of brings me to to sort of about the last talking point for this video because i don't want it to be like 45 minutes long um mm -hmm. with other publishers going on and and making games in the star wars universe what are you kind of what what's your ideal game what do you what do you want to see or, or what kind of thing would you like to see out of a certain studio so con well considering we're getting an open world game from ubisoft mm -hmm. and considering ubisoft worked on rainbow six siege yep. i really want to see ubisoft do like attack the star wars tactical shooter like rainbow six siege set in the prequel era um, something where maybe it, like it has a single player campaign of like Republic Commando essentially, but mm. then a multiplayer is you know five v five for the Republic. You have Republic Commandos, Arc Troopers, Clone Commandos, and then for the Separatists you have like Commando Droids, IG Assassin Droids, and um, like maybe Super Tactical Droids, and you mm. just have a tactical shoot Star Wars game similar to Cinematic Captures um, Shadow of the Republic virtual production. That was perfect. I mean, you that had was a crazy. Commando you had a Republic Commando squad infiltrate, take out commando droids, and then rescue a senator, like a hostage. So yeah. that, to me, like that would be an, an incredible Star Wars game that I'd love to see. And I'd love to see that from Ubisoft because I adore Rainbow Six. Mm. Um, I suck other... at Rainbow Six, bro. <laughs> I'm so bad at that I... game. <laughs> it's tough. It, it is tough. Like it, It's got a steep learning curve. Mm. But from other from other publishers i'm not i'm not too sure i've never really thought too much about who i want games from it's more just what type of game i want to see hmm. um if this open world game from ubisoft is single player or if it's um not a bounty hunting thing then i'd love to see i'd still love to see an open world bounty hunter game but i mm -hmm. think it just depends on what they do and i, I honestly i want to see a like just more single player action games as well yep. like fall in love but just love to see more of those and a pod racing game from codemasters so yeah ea are in the process of acquiring them so I, and i'd love to see them work on a pod racing game like proper in-depth like squadrons was in-depth for space combat but i'd love to see a make really this for speeders um, yeah system. but yeah make it for like pod for pods, and stuff yeah like that. 
yeah and that would be crazy like that would that was just like 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 i was saying i can't remember who i was saying it to recently but you know this was before we knew about um ubisoft and, and and opening it up to other publishers i was just saying like even if ea could pump out a few smaller games like along the way like excuse me similar level to to what uh squadrons was do you know what i mean like like having yeah. these small star wars gaming experiences a little bit more frequently would, would keep more people happy but but then still have your your big titles that you can like jedi fallen order or, or, or a battlefront potentially being redone yeah. um into a third game or something like that you know and then, and then to hear that Lucasfilm Games came back, and then all these other publishers are, are looking at making games and stuff in in the Star Wars universe, it's just like it, it's like a dream come true. Like it really is. It's it's a gift that we weren't yeah. expecting. And you know, obviously, mm -hmm. we we work closely with EA on a lot of things, but even we didn't see this. <laughs> like we didn't. We had no clue about any of this, and this was yeah. oh, one of the oh. things that just shocked us. And. <laughs> I was talking about it uh, in in my last video that I uploaded about, about you know whether or not we would see a Battlefront three and and I realized that I was almost crucified for saying this because I seem to be the only person in the Star Wars gaming realm that wants a battle royale set in the Star Wars universe. I, I want one. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm glad someone else does because I said that in my last Danny video. Wants it as well. and, Quite and, a few people. Actually. Yeah, and like my comment section absolutely fried me for it. Like they were like, oh. <laughs> like they would ruin star wars if they made a battle royale game like you don't know what you're talking like i was getting like crucified oh, dude like people were going in on me and i was just like dude like i'm a competitive dude like mm -hmm. i i play warzone every single day like it's addicting yeah. you know like i i mm -hmm. i love the thrill of beating 149 or 148 or 47 players depending what what game mode you're playing yeah. you know beating out 140 plus players to win a round you know it's yeah, it's it the ultimate competitive game mode like i guess in a sense and yeah. so many people were just like like it's stupid it doesn't make sense well i'm like i don't care it doesn't need to make sense like just make it fun you know like can you imagine yeah. like dropping down onto some like planet or map or whatever you land in mm -hmm. and you find find a lightsaber on the ground you just hack the guy next yeah. to you to death like yeah like, that'd just, be so dope. you know or, or you land yeah, down yeah. and you grab han's dl44 like like uh, a blaster mm -hmm. like that and you just ping someone's face off with it like the, the amount of things you could do beskar armor or beskar spear as a weapon you know like all these things that you could dive into yeah there's so much you can do for it it's ridiculous and not just the, the overall like floor loot and weapons mm -hmm. and stuff like that but also just the the cosmetics that you could have like you either yeah. essentially create your own character and have like different species mm. of clothing items and all that stuff or you have actual skins from the star wars universe you yeah. know drop into a battle royale map as luke skywalker or yeah. um someone as little as like command degree like it's a clone, i could i could Commander just hear the ever. immersion extremists like crying <laughs> right now like 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 luke skywalker uh, drops yeah. down and grabs a dl44 and is like like shooting stormtroopers mm -hmm. with it or whatever you know what i mean like i can just hear them yeah. scream but but that's the thing like you said before like having a game with a battle pass like that would be the the, the prime thing to do with this star Wars. like if they were to do a star wars battle royale you could mm -hmm. basically go in say we're gonna have a hundred tier battle pass a bunch of cosmetics in a double xp whatever you need you know what i mean like we yeah. already had the attachment system in battlefront 2 with weapons you know mm -hmm do the same sort of thing i guess maybe i don't know if you could do like loadout drops the same way but you i guess you could have maybe a, a supply crate or something that you, that you could potentially you know find throughout the map or go to that would spawn yeah. throughout the map that could give you you know it, it could give me my nt242 you know what i mean and i could snipe yeah. people's faces mm -hmm. off because that's my favorite weapon mm -hmm. in battlefront 2 you know uh, or it, yeah. you know it could give an e11 with the right attachments on it that you like do you know what i mean like you could get yeah. Yeah, um, an EE three that that works similar to the way Boba's does in Battlefront two, like that kind of stuff would be crazy. And and they just they weren't having a bar of it, dude. Like <laughs> they they were just the like thing... you're a fake YouTuber, like you don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Like there's no immersion in a battle royale. I'm just like guys, I'm just telling you what would be a fun ass Battlefront game or, or yeah. Star Wars game. The... Mm -hmm. the thing with that as well is that with a battle pass system is let well like this year for example we get a bad batch season one okay see you know if we got a battle a styles battle right now season one battle pass 
Bad Batch, mm. Season Two Battle Pass, The Book of Boba Fett. Imagine all the cosmetics that you could you could have yeah. just from one season of one show. Even like, just a Mando be- one. Like you, you do season one as Mando. Like you you could yeah. get skins like Cara Dune or Grief Cargo or like you could make yourself mm-hmm. the, the the fish people from from season two. You know what I mean? Like or the yeah. the frog the frog people. Sorry, I mean, you could make yourself mm-hmm. like them or. You know, I I just there's so much potential for that game to be a thing and be huge. Mm-hmm. You know, so many people yeah. love Star Wars. So many people love like Warzone or Fortnite or or um, Apex. You know, there, there's so many people. And if you saw a Star Wars game like that, I guarantee you, people would come from other games. Like there, it wouldn't just be us as a Star Wars community. There would be people yeah. that are diehard COD fans that go, oh, there's a, I, I like Star Wars. Star Wars is cool. Like there's a battle Royale. I love battle Royales. Like, let me go and try it. And then you get more mm-hmm. people. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, I'm, it's a I'm... game mode that just brings people's attention. And I think they'd be crazy not to mm-hmm. do it, to be honest. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree with you. Mm. But you know, like, the, yeah, this was the main sort of thing that I wanted to do today. I just want to have a sit down, shoot the shit, talk some chat and, you know, kind of get your ideas and bounce some stuff off you. But mm-hmm. um, I mean, I'm going to wrap it up there. I appreciate you coming on and, and chatting no, with me, man. Me. No, no, it's my yeah, pleasure. Anytime. I'm sure we'll do more chats in the future. And guys, if you guys want to see oh, more content like this, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. Also go and follow Mark on all of his socials. I'll have his YouTube and stuff linked down below so you can check him out. And with that, I really appreciate all of you guys clicking on another video. I will see you all very soon. Thank you for tuning in. And may the force be with you always.